stock market terminology. 10 terms every investor needs to know. What's up everyone, it's Levi from Wall Street Survivor and today we're back with part four of our Survivor 101 series. Sorry for the wait guys, I know it's been a while. Remember, this is a 10 part series introducing you to the stock market in the simplest and most easy way possible. So if you haven't watched the videos before this, make sure to go check those out and stay tuned for the videos coming soon. So today's video is a big one for me personally because hopefully it will help you guys not get frustrated with the same things that I got frustrated with when I started investing in the stock market. As a beginning investor, it's so frustrating trying to wade through all the financial jargon. As you're trying to do your due diligence and proper research, it can just get really discouraging. I know I found myself trying to learn so much but not being able to understand the simplest terms that everybody else seems to know exactly what they meant. It can be super discouraging to be trying to learn but have no idea what the jargon and all the vocabulary around investing even means. And that's why I'm making this video today. I'm going to be explaining 10 of the most foundational and essential stock market terms. By the end of the video, you guys will be able to keep up with the analysts on CNBC or read any Investopedia article like a pro. Let's get started. Weighing in at number 10, we have ticker symbol. A stock's ticker symbol is usually a set of one to five letters that is used to abbreviate that company's name. For example, Facebook's ticker symbol is FB, Microsoft is NSFT, and so when you see FB trading at plus 3% today, that means Facebook is trading up 3%. It sounds super simple, and it really is, but a lot of the times people won't even say the company names, they'll just say the ticker symbols. Ticker symbols can also be used to differentiate different classes of shares. Some companies will allow you to buy different classes of stock, like Berkshire Hathaway has BRK.B and BRK.A, so ticker symbols can be used to differentiate share types within companies. More on that, I'm sure, in future videos. Okay, first one's out of the way, now let's go on to the next. Number nine, we have the S&P 500. That's the letter S, the ampersand, or whatever that thing is called, letter P, and then the number 500. The S&P 500 stands for the Standard & Poor's 500 Index. Index meaning a collection of stocks, 500 of the largest publicly listed companies, in the US. The S&P 500 is widely used as an indicator of how the economy is doing in general. Now there's a huge debate over how accurate that is as an indicator, but nevertheless, you'll hear it thrown around a lot. If the S&P 500 is up big over a period of time, then a lot of people take that as an indication that the economy is growing. If it's down for a period of time, many economists and analysts take that as an indicator that the economy is shrinking. And at number eight, we have bull and bear. And when I just said that the market is going up or going down, well that coincides with the meaning of bull and bear. When the stock market or the major indices of the stock market that people normally track are growing in value over a period of time, then people will say that we are in a bull cycle. If the opposite is true, then people will say we are in a bear cycle. If you're bullish on stock, that means that you think the price of that stock is going to go up over time. If you are bearish on a stock, that means you think that that stock price is going to go down. These terms have a weird history with the stock market. Something about how when a bull charges at you, they stab you with an upward trajectory, whereas a bear slashes down with his paws, I don't know. But anyway, it's an essential term in the stock market. You'll hear it all the time, and it's really important to understand that bull means something is going up or increasing in price, and bear means something is going down or is thought to be going down in price. So that's your fun fact for the day. Coming in at number seven, we have market cap or market capitalization, which is the share price of a stock multiplied by the number of shares that are outstanding or owned by investors. So if you take the share price, multiply it by shares outstanding, then you get the market capitalization. There are three main classifications of market cap, large cap, mid cap, and small cap stocks, and those are used to describe how big a company's market capitalization is. Anything above $10 billion is called a large cap stock. Mid cap companies are between two and $10 billion, and small cap is anything less than $2 billion in market capitalization. Technically, there's two other classifications on either side, nano cap and mega cap, but really those terms aren't thrown around all that much. Hopefully that all makes sense. 
Coming in at number six is volume. Volume is pretty much what it sounds like. It's the amount a stock is traded. So you take a given time period and you count how many times that stock has changed hands and that is the stock's volume. It's important to pay attention to the volume of a stock because that will tell you how likely it is that you can buy and sell it when you want to. If the volume is super, super low, it might be really hard to buy or sell that stock. And if it's super high, that means people are buying and selling a lot. Coming in at number five, we have stop loss. Stop losses are a common tool that people use as a safety net when they invest in a stock. You set a stop loss order at a certain price and that stop loss will automatically trigger a sell whenever the share price of that stock dips below a certain amount. I'm gonna do a whole video on stop loss orders and what the philosophy is behind them coming soon, but just know for now that when people are talking about stop losses, they're talking about establishing safety nets so that their investments don't tank too far down and that they don't sustain too large of a loss. Okay, coming in at number four is the P-E ratio. Now this one's a little bit complicated, so stay with me. The P-E ratio is found by taking the share price of a stock and dividing it by the earnings per share. The P-E ratio essentially tells you how much money you need to invest in order to gain $1 of the company's earnings. So for instance, if a company had a P-E ratio of 10, that would mean that you need to invest $10 in order to gain $1 of the company's earnings. When people talk about PE ratio, they're often talking about whether a company is over or undervalued. And there's no way I could explain this all in just one video, but just know that the PE ratio is share price over earnings per share. And it tells you as an investor how much of a company's earnings you'll be able to take a part of as an investor. Okay, so now we're in our top three and coming in hot at number three is ETF, which stands for exchange traded funds. An ETF is a financial tool that trades like a stock but underneath the price of an ETF is actually an entire basket of companies that make up that fund. So if you buy an ETF, you're actually buying small pieces of a bunch of different stocks. Many investors use this to help diversify their portfolios so that they're not taking on too much risk. Start with an ETF like an S&P 500 ETF. You would own a fund that underneath of it would have all of the S&P 500 companies as shares that you would own when you buy that ETF. Then we're working together. Now things are starting to click. ETFs are an awesome tool because they're super easy to buy and trade and relatively inexpensive and it can allow you to diversify without having a ton of different holdings that are super hard to track. Number two, blue chips. So for a while, I literally just thought blue chips were those fancy tortilla chips that tasted really good with salsa. Blue chips are companies that are generally well-known, usually large cap stocks, that have been around for a while and have a strong track record. Think Disney, Johnson & Johnson, or Walmart. Blue chip stocks are considered the safest investments and it's commonly advised in the financial world that people buy blue chip stocks if they're looking to invest in the long term. But just because a stock is classified as a blue chip doesn't mean it's invincible. So remember, even if you have a low risk portfolio, make sure you follow the golden rule of investing, which is don't invest money that you're not willing to live without. And for number one, we have fundamental versus technical analysis. And I'm actually going to do an entire video that explains these two terms. Basically, there are two different schools of thought and how you should analyze and decide which stocks to invest in. Fundamental analysis focuses on financial ratios like the P-E ratio that we talked about earlier in the video, whereas technical analysis focuses on the history of a stock and its price in order for investors to decide the best time to buy stocks. Essentially, they are opposite schools of thought when it comes to investing, Fundamental analysis tries to focus on the intrinsic value of a company, whereas technical analysis tries to focus on the timing of when to buy a stock in order to take advantage of short-term price swings. Fundamental analysis is commonly thought of to be more useful for investors who are investing for the long term, whereas technical analysis is usually thought to be for traders who are looking on the short term. Again, I'm gonna do a whole video explaining this, so don't worry if you don't quite understand what those mean yet, and that rounds out our list. So there you have it, my top 10 most essential stock market terms. These are terms that every investor needs to know before they start investing, and now you guys have those tools in your tool belt and hopefully won't be as confused the next time a finance conversation comes up at the family Thanksgiving dinner table.
If there are any other terms that you would like to know the meaning of, please comment them down in the description below and I'll try to help explain and maybe we can even make a part two of this video. As always, remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the Wall Street Survivor channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.